Whenever I hook up or unhook up our RV sewer system, I always want to wash my hands when I'm finished. So in this video, we're going to make our own DIY RV hand sanitation station. And stick around to the end of the video too, because Susan's going to teach you how to make your very own hand sanitizer. So let's check it out. Hi everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And today we're gonna to be talking about making our own DIY RV hand sanitation station. Hey, if this is your first time seeing us on YouTube, welcome aboard. We make tons of videos all about RVing and we also have our website, rvblogger.com, where we literally have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing as well. Today's video is gonna be about our RV hand sanitation station. And then, uh, and that's because whenever I hook up or unhook the septic system to our RV, even though I'm wearing gloves, I t the first thing I wanna do when I take my gloves off is sanitize my hands or wash my hands. So we thought it might be a cool idea to go ahead and make a hand sanitation station right at the back of the RV so I can do that first thing. So the items that we're gonna to use today to build our hand sanitation station, and that's hard to say, by the way, are three things basically. First of all, we have a clear tissue box that we're gonna use and we're gonna mount this and then we're gonna put all of our orange gloves into here so they're easy access and they'll be mounted so you can just pull them right out one at a time. Second thing we're gonna do is install some paper towels as well. So we have a paper towel holder, some paper towels, and I've got a couple of extra things here to help hold the paper towels steady while we're driving up and down the road so they don't go flying everywhere and the roll doesn't unravel in the, in the storage compartment. You'll see what I mean shortly. And then the third component is gonna be our hand sanitizer. We have some Velcro to stick it on the door, but we're gonna go a little further than that and make sure that it doesn't jostle loose while we're driving up and down the road as well. And stick around till the end of the video because Susan's gonna show you how to make your very own hand sanitizer. So without any further ado, let's get started on our DIY RV hand sanitation station. So right now, I've already pre-drilled the holes in the back of the glove holder and I'm just uh, screwing it into the door. And then we're gonna put all of our gloves in here. Okay, now that we have our glove box mounted, we're gonna go ahead and mount our paper, paper towel rack. It's pretty good. So we have our hand sanitizer here, which is now Velcroed onto the door, but that's not gonna be enough you know, that Velcro probably won't hold and keep this from falling off the door while we're driving down the road. So we have these pieces which are left over from uh, our little spice holders that we use inside the RV. And my thought is if I put one, you know, above and below, that'll help to hold this in place so it doesn't bounce up and down and that'll help to hold it against the door when we're traveling. So we're gonna get these screwed in place and then we're gonna drive around and try them out. And uh, if they don't hold it in place, I'm gonna put some bungee cords on here to help hold it in place even more securely. So let's get started on that now. We have these little screws that we're gonna use because these spice rack pieces, they have, uh, I guess, glue on the back of them or you know glue strips but I also want to secure them with screws. Now these screws might be just a tad too long and I don't want them pointing through <laughs> the door. So I've added a couple washers to each screw just to help more, make sure they don't poke through the other side of the door. So we have our paper towel holder mounted up here, but as you know, when you're driving down the road, if you just leave your paper towels loose, you know, they'll unroll from being jarred around. So what we're gonna do is just install a little hook on each side of the paper towel roll, and then we'll hook our bungee cord right around, and that'll hold the paper towels in place while we're rolling down the road. Perfect. Okay, so we have our paper towel rolls installed and now the back of this has a Velcro strip. There's a Velcro strip here and then 
our spice rack pieces hold that in place so I can pull it out and squirt it on my hands. Now, the thing is, if I put this back this way and then I close the door, this is now going to be in the upside down position and we don't want it to leak. So the reason we installed this so that it's removable is one, so we can replace it, but two, whenever we close the door, we want to put it in the upside down position so that when the door closes, this flips around and now it's in the right side up position and it won't leak that way. So that's the reason that we installed this particular setup the way that we did. Okay, now I'm going to fill my little glove holder with all of my orange gloves. I know you guys have seen me talk about these gloves before, by the way. They're by Glove Works. They're the best gloves I've ever, ever used. They're super thick. They're heavy duty. They come with this diamond grid pattern on them. So when you're handling your sewer hose fittings that are kind of slippery plastic fittings, these will grip them really well. And you can't puncture these gloves. I mean, they're really, really tough. So uh, I highly recommend them. But anyway, we'll go ahead and fill up our, our glove box. All right, there we go. My glove box is all set. I've got my paper towels and I have my hand sanitizer. So whenever I get started installing my septic, I just pop out a couple of gloves, hook it up or disconnect it, throw my gloves away. I can grab my hand sanitizer, sanitize my hands, good to go. If I need a paper towel for anything, it's right here and it's always in place, ready to rock and roll. So we did a quick test and I kind of slammed the door. And of course this flew off of here. It was the one thing we were worried about so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a hook on each side and that will allow us to put a bungee cord across here and that will help to hold it in place. Should be good to go after that. There we go. That should do the trick. There you go. Our new DIY RV hand sanitation station is complete. Now that we've installed our DIY RV hand sanitation station, let's shoot over to Susan where she's gonna teach us how to make our very own hand sanitizer. Hi everybody, this is Susan in front of the camera and that's Mike behind the camera. <laughs> how did I know that was gonna happen? <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> No, I haven't. So anyway, I have two recipes here for you to make your own hand sanitizer. And the first recipe only calls for three ingredients, pretty simple. And that's isopropyl alcohol, aloe vera gel, and some essential oils, basically to give it a little fragrance, but also essential oils are, can be pretty antibacterial as well. So let's get started. And our first recipe, we have one cup of isopropyl alcohol. So we shall pour this in here. And there we go. And then we have a half a cup of aloe vera gel. There we go. Good enough. Pour that in there. And then we want 15 drops of an essential oil. And one of the essential oils that we have is a germ fighter. So I figured that sounds pretty good to me. Germ fighter. <laughs> so you want 15 drops. So I'm imagining if we just give it quite a bit of shake, then we've got ourselves 15 drops. And then stir it up, give it a good mix. Now the aloe is basically as a moisturizer and it helps with the consistency. So you could always add more if it's a little too runny because this recipe does appear to be a little runny, but you have the ability to add more. It's basically, like I said, for moisturizer. Whoop. 
And there you have it. And then now you have your own hand sanitizer. Now the second recipe is from the World Health Organization. And this is a more thinner consistency and designed to be a spray. Now, what they recommend is to have an alcohol concentration of 99%. And in this case, we're going to be using Everclear. No! <laughs> I don't know why we ever had Everclear, but so this particular one <laughs> is 190 proof, which is 95% alcohol. So we're slightly under World Health Organization standards, but I think it'll be just fine. Then we also have peroxide, glycerin, and we either have distilled water or boiled water that has been chilled. Uh, and earlier I boiled some water uh, and then got that at a colder temperature for this purposes. So what we'll do here is we're gonna start off with our Everclear and we need a cup of that. Good thing this isn't going to waste. All right, there we go. So next, we need the hydrogen peroxide and they want 3% hydrogen peroxide. And this is a tablespoon. There we go, tablespoon of that. Then we want a quarter cup of our cold water. Like so. And then a teaspoon of glycerin. And the glycerin is a moisturizer just like the aloe vera was for the thicker version. And then there we go. Give that a good stir. Mixing up all your ingredients. Sometimes this has less of a sticky residue to leave on your hands than maybe the one with the aloe vera gel and essential oils. Maybe a little full. There we go. And then put on your lid. And now you have your spray smells like alcohol. I feel very disinfected. So anyway, I hope that if you have a difficult time finding any hand sanitizer or you just feel like you would prefer making your own, here are two recipes, one by the CDC, the other one by the World Health Organization that will meet standards that will apply for your hand sanitizer projects. We'll add links down below for all the materials that we use to build our hand sanitation station and let us know what you think of it in the comments down below as well. Or if you have a hand sanitation station in your RV, tell us how you made it as well. We'd love to hear about that and we'd love to check it out. Speaking of check it out, if you'd like to check out some other of our videos, just click right over here on one of these videos and when you do, please remember to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every week when we come out with a new video. So for Mike and Susan, we'll see you next time.